I'm Vinny Politan. Great to have you with us tonight here on Closing Arguments. I'm going to begin tonight because over the weekend, I think I caught Alec Baldwin in a lie. Okay? Alec Baldwin. I think I caught him in a lie. Let me take a little bit of time to, to explain. And, and it could be a little white lie, or maybe it's a, a bigger lie. Okay? Let's start. Alec Baldwin, you, you know he's now being investigated criminally out in Santa Fe, New Mexico, for shooting and killing Helena Hutchins. The gun was in his hand. Uh, we know that. He's admitted that. It's, it's not a mystery. The gun was in his hand. The gun fired. He said he didn't squeeze the trigger in one of his interviews. But the gun was in his hand, the gun fired, and Helena Hutchins was shot and killed. So investigators are trying to figure out what, what exactly happened, right? What are the facts of the case? Now, Alec Baldwin has a couple roles. He's the star of the movie, also one of the producers. Okay, so he's one of the people in charge. When Alec Baldwin uh, stars in a movie, I think he's kind of in charge anyway. But uh, in this movie, a lower-budget movie, he's the, one of the producers of it. And he obviously is the A-list star of the production. So how exactly did this happen? Why did it happen? Why was there a live round in there? What did he know? What did he do? Um, what did he say? Who did he communicate with? Well, to try to figure some of this out, they're interviewing all the people involved in the production, but they also want to take a look at this, cell phones. We know every case that we cover here on Court TV. There's evidence on everyone's cell phone. It, you know, this is how you communicate. So um, there was an, a warrant issued on December 16th. The affiant requested Alec's phone from him as well as his attorney and was instructed to acquire a warrant, okay? So they're trying to get his phone, and he says, you want my phone? Get a warrant. Okay, that's fine. I mean, you're, you're entitled to do that, right? You don't have to hand things over. You can request them to go through the proper legal channels and the filters of a judge and other people to make sure it's an appropriate warrant. So there's a warrant issued December 16th. The affiant is requesting a warrant for the seizure and search of Alec Baldwin's cell phone to search for any evidence relating to the death investigation of Helena Hutchins. A fine believes there may be evidence on the phone due to individuals using cellular phones during and or after the commission of crimes. Such information, if it exists, may be material and relevant to this investigation. A fine was also made aware there were several emails and text messages sent and received regarding the movie production Rust in the course of interviews. Okay. So, all right, so investigators believe, listen, people are sending text messages, they're sending emails, there's this horrific event that happened. No one is saying that Alec Baldwin planned and plotted the murder of Helena Hutchins. No one's saying that. But the gun was in his hand, the gun went off. Is there criminal responsibility? What did he say? What did he know? Who did he communicate with? All the information is going to come from here. So, let's get to the weekend. Um, Instagram video posted by Alec Baldwin on Saturday, okay? Now, everyone is saying, listen, he's not cooperating because when they asked, and we should, when they asked for his phone, he basically the response was, get a warrant. But here's what he said on Instagram. Take a look. Any suggestion that I am not complying with requests or orders or demands or search warrants about my phone, that that's a lie. This is a process where one state makes the request of another state. Someone from another state, from another state can't come to you and say, give me your phone, give me this, give me that. They can't do that. They've got to go through the state you live in. That is a process that takes time. They have to specify what exactly they want. They can't just go through your phone and take, you know, your, uh, your photos or your love letters to your wife or what have you. I, I really don't. Uh, no, but but of course, we are one thousand uh, percent uh, going to comply with all that. We're uh, you know perfectly fine with that. Comply, cooperate. Is he? Is he really? Now he says, I, I, "I'm complying with requests or orders." Well, you comply with an order. I think the request was made, and and that was denied, 
right? You know, if you want to really cooperate with law enforcement and they say, we want to take a look at your phone, you hand them the phone, okay? You don't have to. But if you're just cooperating with the investigation and complying with all the requests made of you, then you just hand the phone over. But if you want it, if you, if you want to make sure that they do what they have to do and they maybe you try to narrow what they can see and what they can't see and when they can see it, and time is ticking all along, right? And he has possession of the phone. Um, he's got his lawyer doing his work and there's nothing illegal about what he's doing. But don't tell me you're complying with all requests and you're cooperating and making this investigation easy for investigators, because you're not, because you're holding on to your phone. You're allowed to. You're allowed to. But don't tell me you're cooperating, okay? Now, I may be wrong about all of this. Let's bring in our think tank. We've got a great one tonight. Joining us in Tampa, Florida, uh, criminal de defense attorney and supervisor of the Conviction Review Unit at the Florida 13th a judicial circuit, important job, new job. Uh, Teresa Jean-Pierre Coy is with us in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, family law attorney Jennifer Brandt. And in Los Angeles, California, the deputy public defender for Los Angeles County, Philip Dubay. Great to see everyone tonight. Um, and I understand, I, I am not saying he is doing anything illegal. I'm not saying he's doing anything improper. What I'm saying is, if you truly want to cooperate and get this investigation done and get to the truth, if they ask you for your phone, you give them the phone, Teresa. I, I disagree. I think there should be an in-camera review by the judge to be able to partition out some of the things that he may not want on there. I think the relevant time period is the day of the shooting, and it, the contents of the phone should be limited to that day. I mean, you know, who knows what else is on his phone? I don't think there's anything incriminating there, but I definitely think that, you know, he ha he is cooperating. He just wants to put some parameters around that, and I don't see anything wrong with that. Well, um, let, me, let me ask you, Jennifer, me, couldn't, couldn't the lawyers that? just, wait, wait, couldn't they, couldn't they sit down and, and maybe try to work it out first instead of saying, get a warrant? How about, hey, you want it, what do you want to see? Let's look at it together. You look at it with my lawyer there and what you can take Vinny. and what you can't take. Come on, Vinny, you know better than that. I disagree with you. I agree with Teresa. I, I don't think he's not cooperating. Asking for a warrant, you even admit it. That's the thing to do, to, to require the... The, the state to come forward and say what they want from him and for him to then produce it. Then they can figure out, okay, is it narrowly tailored? What are they as actually asking for? I mean, you admitted yourself, everybody holds all kinds of information on their phone and he's a public person. I mean, does he really want his whole private life, you know, exploited? I mean, this is a narrow issue. And I think the the information should be narrowly tailored, I mean, to what is relevant to this investigation and not everything that the guy has on his phone. Well, here, here's the problem with all of this, uh, Philip Dubé, is he's trying to, in the public, portray one thing. I just want the truth. I want the investigation. But get a warrant if you want to get the truth. <laughs> There's a difference between the two. It's nothing illegal, Philip, nothing illegal. I understand it. But having them go through their state, then they got to go through New York. I used to do this at the prosecutor's office when, when other jurisdictions were serving well, warrants in New Jersey, they'd have to come see me in Bergen County. So I understand the process and I understand that it's all legal, but if you're truly, truly cooperating 1000% and not putting up roadblocks, you and your lawyer would sit down with the investigator and say, okay, here's the phone, what do you want to see? Let's, let's, take, let's download it and make sure you don't take anything that you shouldn't take and you take what you're entitled to. Well, cooperation, Vinny, does not mean a relinquishment of every single right under the Constitution, right? And uh, furthermore, you are not, and courts are not allowed to uh, hold a refusal to consent to a search of anything, be it your phone, your apartment, your car, against you. It's, it's just a right. Well, we're not talking about law. Subvert. We're talking about what the game he's playing with the public right now. That's what Understood. I'm talking about. I, I got I it. I got it. Maybe. But I got to tell you, I agree with the think tank tonight because, to be fair, you know, there's a difference between legal interests and public relations interests. Right now, his legal interests are in jeopardy. Right now, who really cares what his fans think, what the public thinks? All that really matters, maybe, is what a jury might think of him if charges are filed.
So he's going out of his way right now to protect his legal interests. Now, the other thing I want to add, to be fair, you know, nowadays a cell phone is uh, like a file cabinet. You know, it's not just like a little folder that might have a couple of phone numbers on it or a couple of missives. It's a huge library of information. And I find it very invasive that they can just carte blanche willy nilly open up the file cabinet and help themselves. You're darn right. Get a warrant. And if they do, I'd move to quash. Would, would you consider that still cooperating, Teresa? I think that is still cooperating. Again, you know, he has an interest Fight, here. Fighting with investigators who are, who you, wait, because he's, he's speaking a lot publicly, saying, I want the truth to come out. I want them to get to the truth. That's the only way we get justice for Lane, Helena Hutchins is if we get to the truth. Um, and he's And doing that's different that. than what I mean, he's doing right now. Right now, he's doing what every criminal defendant or suspect or person being investigated does. Which he has a right to do. And I said that. And that's what the criminal justice is here for. So, I mean, I just think that he is doing the right thing. He's, he's being advised by his He's lawyers. doing the right thing to get and to the truth or the right thing to protect his interests? Because they both. They, really? Does that get us closer to yeah. the truth? How does that get, get us closer to the truth? We, we were only looking at the day of the shooting. Anything before then or after then is Investigators irrelevant. have not seen his phone yet. This shooting happened a, a, a while ago, last year. OK, they still haven't seen his phone. They've been investigating. He keeps saying, I want the truth, the truth, the truth. Yet um, we're not. How, how, do, how does him fighting um, investigators and, and perhaps moving to quash the warrant, which legally he may be entitled to do, how does that help investigators and how does it help the truth come out? I don't understand. Listen, you Vinny, have rights I, I as a criminal it. defendant. And he is exercising those rights. Right. And I that's, mean, you may see, not like see, it. See, that's the difference between the, the, the defense and, and prosecution. Prosecution investigators, we're looking for the truth. The defense and great defense attorneys like y'all, right, are protecting people from the investigation, regardless of what the truth is. So let's just all agree now. I think we're all in agreement. His... Main concern right now is not the truth. His main concern, which very likely should be, is his own interests. Because the truth and his interests may not be the same. Well, he has. I, 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 I still no, disagree. No, I disagree with you. Finney, let me just say something. How do you, you disagree with that? Here's, here, here's the thing. I think we, we are saying kind of the same thing. But the, the thing that we're not saying is that maybe it is that he shouldn't be speaking out in the public so much. I mean, you seem to be bothered by what he's saying on Instagram and what I'm he's saying I'm just pointing about. out the hypocrisy and of what he is saying. I don't think it's And what he's doing. I think, I think from his point of view, he feels perhaps that he's cooperating. Maybe, from a, and from a legal standpoint, I think we agree that he is, he is, doing what he needs to do. Um, but I agree with that part. I agree with that part. Maybe he shouldn't be, right. So, but maybe the problem is that he shouldn't be out there kind of on Instagram and doing interviews and things like that and talking a lot because that could kind of cause some problems later on. Yeah. So I think we all agree. We're out of time for this segment, decide. but I think we all agree that he's doing what every suspect in a criminal investigation should do. Have a great lawyer, and when they're coming looking for information from you, make them go through the judge. And don't make it easy for them, and don't cooperate and remain silent, okay? Absolutely. Don't, but don't tell me you're looking for the truth. All right, when we come they, back. What? They don't have probable cause, Vinny. It, I, we're talking about different things here, Philip. We're talking about different, we're agreeing. I'm agreeing with you. I agree. It's just he's not seeking the truth at this moment.